Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 67. It's getting up there, man. Um, and uh, it, 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 I'm, blah, blah. Jeez. I told you I needed coffee. <laughs> I told you I needed coffee. Okay. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 67. I'm Mike Sorg at the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, at Sorgatron on the tweeters. Uh, production dude with some local groups, uh, including IWC to RWA, and helping get some word out there and some digital downloads out there on PittsburghWrestling.com, including Vicious Outcast Wrestling that we'll be talking about a lot tonight. With me is my usual indie wrestling compatriot. Down in San Antonio, Texas, Eamon Payton of the great Inspire Pro Wrestling. He's a commentator down there. How you doing, sir? I'm doing really great. Uh, excited to talk about independent wrestling as always. I'm always excited when uh, you intro the show, Sore, because it's always it's always full of a lot of energy. And I know that you, uh, I just realized you kind of like you love to. I don't. I, your phrasing is my favorite thing. <laughs> referring to yourself as a as a dude, I, I don't know. There's so what really what, the, what are you talking about? This is what happens when on your fifth podcast of the evening. So I gotta <laughs> dude, keep it up, man. Jazzed up, I'm excited. Jazzed it up. We got this. Yeah. This gets me through the next hour. But I lo- that is not a problem because I love indie wrestling, and that's why we've been doing sixty sevens of these conversations. And uh, you can join us. It's it's in. Indie Wrestling, damn it, Indie Mayhem Show. See, it's late. Um, you can join us and check us out and all the other shows we have going on at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And you can find this on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, all kinds of fun audio and video formats. And you can also drop us a line and let us know what you think about our guests, questions for people coming up, anything else, anything you think we should be checking out at 412-206-WMS0 for the hotline. Or just uh, drop an email to GoodTimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And you can join us here also live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com at 11 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and, and join us in the chat room. You can drop in. Let us know what you think. Uh, our, our, fr- our friend Gabriel from Portland is joining us in there right now. Wheels is usually joining us, our, our friend from the RWA, and uh, all kinds all kinds of great stuff going on. we got a special guest tonight. Uh, of course, the Vicious Outcast Wrestling is holding a show this weekend in uh, Connellsville, PA, um, including the Queen of the Ring. One of those people that's uh, been, uh, it, 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 she's a queen of, of, of a VOW. She's our current uh, champion. It's Samantha Starr is joining us tonight. How are you doing? I'm doing phenomenal. How are you? All right. All right. Uh, I'm very excited for this. You know, I, I, I love VOW, and we'll get into a little bit, you know, very big on pushing the women's division. And I feel he's like the one doing it in the area. Uh, it, it, it seems uh, in the Pittsburgh area. Um, but, but first, I want to take it back. We'll get into all that kind of stuff. But for for you, what is your first kind of memory? What got you into kind of uh, professional wrestling in general in the first place? Well, for those of you who don't know who I am, I am the perfect knockout, Samantha Starr. I am the third generation sensation. So wrestling has been in my blood back for three well, third generation, three generations. Yeah, that does the math. <laughs> anyway, sorry. It's late. It's, it's all right. <laughs> um, with three out of four of my grandparents wrestling, both my parents, my uncle, my aunt, and myself wrestling, mm-hmm. wrestling's in the blood. Nice, nice. So it was kind of a foregone conclusion that, that you were going to get involved with this. Yeah, uh, I started out going to shows when I was probably about eight or nine. And just fell in love with it, fell in love with the behind the scenes, the fan interactions, the autograph signings, everything. Fell in love with it, and I started training when I was 14 years old, taking my first bump in the ring. And once the next day when I couldn't lift my head off the pillow and I still wanted to do it, I knew that I was going to follow my dreams through professional wrestling. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, so being being you know uh, in a wrestling family, were they supportive of supportive of you going into it uh, immediately? Then I guess uh, being that early training. Well, my mom was always my biggest supporter. Mm-hmm. She's the one that got me into the ring. She was the one that took me to shows. She was the one that showed me the ins and outs, how to talk to people, how to talk to fans, how to just promote myself. She was always very supportive, and. 
my grandparents were kind of like, ah, well, I really hope you know what you're getting into because they, they saw what it did to their, their bodies themselves. And then they saw what it did to their children. So they definitely had some words of wisdom as far as take care of yourself and know what you're doing and go to college. But Mm -hmm. everyone's always been really supportive and always had my back. That's great. That's great. Uh, So, so, um, you know, looking at it, were there any inspirations as far as, uh, uh, you know, the, the women's professional wrestling? We've had a lot of conversations here, especially with, uh, you know, people like AJ Lee retiring at the, you know, the ripe old age of 28. We've been talking about on the Wrestling Mayhem show and having some uh, 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 some people, you know, other women wrestlers uh, uh, kind of talking about that. Uh, you know, what what kind of was did you look to for, for women's wrestling? Well, growing up, I wasn't allowed to watch wrestling because it was the Attitude Era, oh. and the the business was conducting itself in a more scandalous way than what my parents were used to in like the 70s and 80s and early, early 90s. Mm-hmm. So my parents kind of sheltered me from WWE and wrestling throughout the 90s and 2000s. So when I finally got into watching it, I was watching Mickey James and Melina, girls that were covered but had a hell of a lot of talent. Mm-hmm. And then I definitely watched um, Mae Young and Judy Green and Leilani Kai and people like that back where they actually went and worked their asses off and actually had a match instead of just showing their ass. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, what did you, uh, you know, uh, coming up in training, um, you know, what were the biggest, uh, you know, as you got into independent pro wrestling, um, you know, what was the biggest kind of uh, hurdle for you? The biggest hurdle, honestly, was tucking my chin. <laughs> <laughs> as far as training goes, I always would, and when I was learning how to fall to protect myself, instead of tucking my chin to my chest like I was supposed to be doing, mm-hmm. I would forget and I would slam my head on the mat so many times to where I would actually throw up. Oh, geez. That was definitely an issue. And then also being a female in the business is harder than what most people think just because we don't get the respect that the men do. We walk into a locker room, you're supposed to shake everybody's hand because if that person that you're um, in the locker room with isn't there, then there's not going to be a show. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if it's the first guy on the card or the last guy on the card he's not there, there's not going to be a show. So I was always taught respect growing up. And as a female, guys will shake everybody else's hands, but they don't think that you deserve it or they don't know that you're part of the show. I'll stand next to guys when the handshakings are going on and I'll get completely passed just because, oh, that's just someone's girlfriend Mm -hmm. or some BS like that. But just breaking free of that was definitely an issue. Does it seem to be a generational thing or an area thing when you when you that you find in your travels? I'm sorry. Does it seem to be like a generational? Like, does it seem like maybe maybe the older wrestlers uh, uh, maybe not showing the respect more or less? Um, because I mean, there, there seems to be, of course, uh, we we've talked on the show about intergender wrestling and and a lot of opportunities for women's wrestling, women's wrestling promotions in a lot of ways. So it seems to be that there's been a place. Um, but you know, do you, do you find that, you know, it's a certain subsect of, of the people you're finding in the locker room? Honestly, it, it's, it's all over. Um, mm-hmm. many people that have come into contact with have been very respectful okay. and like, they'll know either who I am or that I'm on the show or they just shake hands, but just because you're standing there, they don't want to make you feel awkward, mm-hmm. but it's, it's definitely an all over thing just because it's a male dominant sport. Females normally are in the crowd screaming. Awesome. And now, as I said, uh, uh, VOW, I attended last year's uh, uh, Queen of the Ring. Again, I, I, the company, period, I think, that's doing women's wrestling uh, any favors around here um, uh, yeah, on a on a broad basis. That They did a mostly women's show last year. Uh, they're bringing back the Queen of the Ring uh, tournament again this year, this Saturday, actually, uh, at their event. Um, how has uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling been, uh, do you think, to, to women's wrestling so far? Vicious Outcast Wrestling has definitely opened a lot of doors for female wrestlers. They they honestly put effort into having talented females mm-hmm. be promoted on their shows. It's not just someone that's hot with a that wants to go out and shake their ass. They actually care about what we're doing in the ring and they support that and they promote that. But offering the Queen of the Ring 
annually because in May it's Fixing to Mayhem. They give us all an opportunity to get to know each other, to get to wrestle each other, and find out who really is the best. Great. Is there anybody from this tournament? A lot of great names in here, of course, but anybody else that sticks out that you're looking out for, uh, either to either meet in the tournament or just kind of uh, uh, other talent that's kind of out there that people should watch out for? Well, I've never wrestled Samantha Heights, and I've never even gotten to meet her. Mm -hmm. So she's my opponent this Saturday for the uh, Queen of the Ring, and I'm definitely curious to get into the ring with her because it's kind of a... I want to make it difficult for the people on commentary just because it's Samantha and Samantha, but <laughs> mm-hmm. she's, I think she's the only person on the show that I haven't met yet, but mm-hmm. I'm, I can't remember. Awesome. Uh, is there anywhere else uh, that you're finding, like, uh, you know, do, do you, are you finding that you're on shows where it's just like the women's match on the show, or are you finding any other promotions that uh, uh, seem to be featuring anything uh, on this level for women performers? Honestly, Vicious Outcast Wrestling sets the bar really high for anybody to compete, especially when it comes to women's wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, you have your female-dominant promotions or your straight female promotions like Shine and Shimmer and Valkyrie. But as far as just regular independent shows that aren't solely female, they're by far the best. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so uh, moving on here. Uh, so what are you watching these days? Pretty Little Liars. <laughs> <laughs> that is not an answer that we expected to that question. Um, <laughs> that's a good spin on it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Actually, I'm a true Pretty Little Liars fan, but as far as wrestling goes, I keep up with WWE as much as I can. I do have a full-time job, and I am a full-time student, of so it's hard for me to get time to watch. Mm-hmm. I keep up with NXT even if I can't watch it. I have a bunch of wrestling friends that are like, "Oh my god, did you see what this person did? Oh my god, you should have seen this." And I'm just like, "Okay, like keep keep going, keep keep me filled in." But <laughs> I definitely prefer New Japan. Uh, they are definitely entertaining, and I'm starting to get into Lucha Underground. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that, and that's interesting. Cause I think uh, I'm not caught up on Lucha, but I understand they're doing some some intergender tag stuff. Amen, I mean, you're more up up mm-hmm. on this than I am currently. I'm, I'm hoping to get on this in the next couple of weeks. Um, but uh, mm-hmm. uh, what do you think about intergender wrestling? There's been a lot, of, of course, controversy we've talked about on this show with things, uh, certain types of matches and everything on there. Um, have you done inter- intergender? Uh, you know, what do you think about the state of that these days? I've done a couple of intergender tags. Mm-hmm. and they're interesting if they're done right. Of course. Guys and girls are completely different physically between just our bodies and our work styles. Males and females are completely different. That's what makes the human race, you know? Right. So to go in there and put a male and a female in the same ring and expect them to do the exact same thing or be able to do the exact same thing is a hard comparison. But... If it's done right and they utilize, okay, this is a female and this is a female, this is a male, this is a male, then if they establish that, then they're going to have a successful match. But if they expect everyone to go 100% just like the men do, it's going to be chaotic and jumbled up. Mm -hmm. Usually, usually. But it can be interesting. It it can be interesting. Like, especially the biggest, the weirdest part for me is usually when there's a huge size difference. Mm-hmm. Right. Honestly, I I can hit. Mm-hmm. I'm not mm-hmm. a small female. Like I'm five foot six, and I'm athletically built. I can definitely throw a punch or a forearm or a chop. But I know up against a guy, unless they're like my size or smaller, like I'm gonna get my ass whooped. So why would I try to hit them? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just the psychology behind it. It's one of those things where, like, your mom always taught you better, like, know who you're fighting before you get into a fight. Certainly. <sighs> the same. <laughs> I'm sorry. Definitely. I've just seen some really stupid decisions being made inside of a wrestling ring mm-hmm. that shouldn't have happened because they should have known better. Certainly. All right. Uh, so tell me, uh, you've been at this for a little bit. What's the uh, best and worst thing about working in indie wrestling so far? Best thing about working in indie, indie wrestling is 
the feeling right before you step out of the curtain, right before you're about to start your match. Mm -hmm. That feeling is indescribable just because you've got the butterflies and everyone always has like the urge to go pee right before. And you're like, Oh my God, I'm I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. But it's just that feeling of the anxiety and the adrenaline rushing. And once you step through the curtain, just, Hearing uh, hearing fans chant your name and scream your name or boo you or yell at you, it's just, it's phenomenal. It makes every bump, every bruise, every broken, broken bone worth it. And the worst part would probably, I love traveling. I love to get, to, I love getting to see like the United States, but the drives kill me. <laughs> I live in, I live in Fayetteville, North Carolina right now. And to go to Vicious Outcast Wrestling, once a month, it's roughly a nine and a half to 10 hour drive one Jeez. way. And because I am a full-time student and a full-time employee, I actually make the drive, wrestle, drive straight home, and then go to work for a 12 hour shift right as soon as I get home. Wow. Yeah. So the drives definitely suck. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, she's uh, Samantha Starr. You're at Vicious Outcast Wrestling, of course, this weekend. Looking to tear it up, of course, in the uh, Queen of the Ring, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, right. anything else you have coming up? I see. I, did I see you're in a, in a convention in uh, Rhode Island? Is it? I am at the uh, what is it? The New England Fan Fest. The I want to I want to say it's the fifth one. Um, I'm going to be Vicious Outcast Wrestling's guest mm-hmm. along with Sabu. That's June twenty eighth. 27th and 28th. <laughs> so you're going to be hanging with Sabu all weekend, huh? How, how, have you have you met him yet? I've met him several times. Nice. Nice. Is, so it, it, that'll it, definitely be an interesting table. <laughs> will there be... Bar- okay, I have a few questions. One, will there be barbed wire at the table? Um, <laughs> Hopefully not on my side. <laughs> and, and is that... Are you expecting a party weekend with Sabu? I, don't I try. I'm a good girl. Okay. I, okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> the worst you'll see of me is what I do inside of a ring. Okay. Just because with with my family history, if anybody knows, I'm the niece of Jake the Snake and I'm the daughter of Sam Houston. Mm-hmm. And there are definitely shadows around our family. There are rumors. There's history. There's Everybody knows that anybody that has a computer can find out, like, that there have been things that have plagued my family. So, growing up around it, I've decided to have a cleaner lifestyle. I'm not CM Punk. I don't, I don't (laughs) touch, I don't touch straight edge or anything like that. But seeing what drugs and alcohol do to families or people in general, Mm. it kind of steered me away from any of that. I'll drink every once in a while. I am 22. I can go out and have a drink. But as far as partying and getting wild, it's just I'm smarter than that. Certainly, certainly. Is this a? It feels like I, I don't know. When we look at some of the guys that've been around for a while, like their John Cena's and whoever's, um, does it seem like since we have all the stories, you know, the Sheik's Iron Sheik's documentary, you heard about everything that happened with him and everything from the 80s, and it seems like everybody had a drug problem. Uh, back not everybody, of course, but it feels like it, right? Or, or you hear about all that crazy mm-hmm. stuff. Does it seem like uh, uh, indie wrestlers or the people coming up generally are more aware and conscious of those sorts of things? Well, honestly, the money's different. Right. Back in back in the eighties, they were getting paid cash every night or at least once a week, and mm-hmm. they had so much money that they didn't know what to do with. And because there were there were no regulatory systems in place saying, okay, well, you're getting drug tested at least once a month or every other week or whatever. Right. They had free range and they were superstars. They, The lives you saw on television, they lived those off screen as well, where they would go and throw down $1,000 on drinks or and not think twice about it. Or the drugs were so accessible back then. And because they weren't in the public eye 24-7 like people are now, it was just part of the lifestyle. So many people had drug problems, and it was it was around everyone. And I'm not saying that people nowadays don't, because I'm sure that a lot of people are either taking painkillers or excessively drinking or doing other right. drugs. But right. it's it's more limited now because they are traveling. As mm-hmm. far as the indie circuit goes, yeah, it's 
honestly, I'm sure if you walk into any indie locker room and say, hey, I've got 20 bucks, someone hook me up with something that'll help my back, you're going to get a couple handouts. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's all about make, people making decisions that are smarter for the long run than impulsive and just reckless. Certainly, certainly. I think I've seen uh, with some of the company policies, the financial planning is part of the curriculum for some of the wrestlers up there now amongst all the other yeah. stuff. So, I mean, hey, at least we're taking some responsibility with that. So that's good to see. So awesome. Anywhere else you're uh, uh, going to be working or you want to plug uh, uh, coming up here for you? Well, besides Vicious Outcast Wrestling, I just became the NASW Heartbreakers Champion, the first ever. That's out of Greensboro, North Carolina. That's the, I want to say it's the third Saturday. My next show with them is May 23rd. And then I'll also be in Franklin, Ohio on May 22nd. And I want to say the promotion's name is 1CW, but it's with Andrew McKee. I'll be facing Aja Pereira there. And that'll be my first time in Ohio, so I'm excited about that. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, let's go. Enjoy, enjoy Ohio. It's very flat. <laughs> <laughs> I have never been, and I'm interested in going. A lot of old steel mills, too. So <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Uh, so go check those out. We'll put some links in the show notes uh, for those uh, promotions. I think I found the pages for both of those. Uh, and thank you so much. Check out Samantha Starr. She's at Vicious Outcast Wrestling. If you can get down there, I'm going to try to work. My, I'm going to try to get somebody else to pick this guy up uh, and get my butt down there, too. Uh, <laughs> so And nobody else is doing uh, women's wrestling like it in the Pittsburgh region, I don't think. Uh, so go, please go check it out. And, we'll, and we're going to continue the conversation with some indie wrestling. That's right, Sorg. Uh, time to talk about some stuff going on in the indie wrestling world uh, this week. Uh, I do want to mention uh, the, the organization that I am a part of, which is Inspire Pro Wrestling, which I'm sure you, uh, most people who have watched what? the show for, who? for 67 Where? episodes. What are you so, talking about? Uh, who is this? I've never heard of such a thing. Never heard of them. Um, but uh, no, the, uh, we actually today, uh, uh, today being Tuesday, obviously not whenever you're listening to this, um, uh, we filmed, uh, or not filmed, what am I saying? We filmed this show. I'm on a tangent. Uh, we announced the card for our next event, which is May 31st, uh, our In Their Blood 2 event. It's our one-year anniversary of the XX division, which is our women's division, conveniently enough. Um, and uh, it's going to be a big night for us. Uh, we have a double main event of uh, Andy Dalton taking on ACH for the Inspire Pro title, as well as the crowning of our first XX Division champion with uh, Athena, Jessica James, and Delilah Doom. Uh, we, we have already announced uh, in the past that uh, Joey Ryan and Candice LeRae uh, will be making their debut on that night. Uh, very excited to have them uh, in Inspire Pro Wrestling. But we also got announced to it today because of uh, a change in one of the matches. Uh, we were originally supposed to have Steve Arino, uh, friend of the show, taking on Buku Dao making his debut. Uh, that, that sadly won't be able to happen, but uh, we replaced it with a, a fatal four-way matchup. Uh, with uh, Steve Arena taking on uh, another friend of the show, Gigolo James Johnson, uh, uh, Midwest uh, wrestling standout Donovan Donhausen, who I've heard a lot of amazing things about and, and excited to bring him in, uh, and the debuting King Ricochet, which mm-hmm. is probably one of our biggest gets that we've ever gotten in Inspire Pro, uh, as far as name value. You know, uh, if you think of the best junior heavyweight wrestlers currently, uh, he is definitely top of the list uh you know ring of honor not ring of honor uh dragon Gate usa pwg new japan pro wrestling he's really done it all uh and the the uh opportunity that we have to bring him in is amazing so um we're very excited to have him uh this event is really i think shaping up to be something super special um and we're very excited uh we are we are off the wall excited about uh, what's to come uh, for that event. And that's May 31st, and you can still get general admission tickets uh, over at inspireprowrestling.com. And we also released a full card that you can check out with uh, our the entire lineup of everything that will be happening. So, yeah. Fancy graphics for stuff. every match. Look at that. Yeah, just about every match. Uh, but, yeah, no, uh, <laughs> that's courtesy of uh, our good friend Dustin Nance, who does an amazing job with our uh, graphics and posters. So, mm-hmm. really good stuff from him. I, I have loved the um, the uptick in 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 wrestling graphic work lately uh, it's very important it's uh, it's very underrated. it is it is i mean jazz jazz kumar has really stepped things up for us uh with Ring, uh, renegade wrestling alliance for instance his stuff stuff over there has just been 
tremendous. It, it, <laughs> Uh, since uh, since the Matt Hardy show, uh, when they had him tacked on, it was just it, it's so great. And, and seeing that stuff up on Facebook just just makes everything look way way epic and uh, great stuff for me to put on the sites and everything. Um, and, and even uh, the stuff I'm getting from um, uh, Jesse Jesse the Mark does the stuff for IWC. He also does stuff for PWX. Uh, not AIW. Does he do AIW? He, he does a couple other things. He may, I feel like he's. I feel like AIW is kind of got a similar. I think I they, get, they they have their yeah. own thing. They they've done their own sites, and I, I there's another one he does, and now it's escaping my brain at the moment. Um, but he, they, but I really love the um, one, but yeah, the, especially the stuff I've seen from IWC, like the recent the Road to Super Indie ones look really good. It really. Uh, um, right, really professional. Well, there's been there's been a lot of kind of rebranding going on with the new, you know, with Justin Plummer taking over and everything, and uh, <laughs> a lot of kind of name changes. Um, I gotta say, I'm really happy about the dance for a personal reason. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, and, and and I know there's other stuff coming down down the pike that's going to be really really interesting. I've seen some previews of some stuff coming up. Uh, graphic wise and and it is very exciting and different right it, it, it yeah. looks like like i love you guys you got a really cool kind of uh old school poster feel to you um <laughs> which really fits with you guys because when i when i watch your video it, it's got i don't want this to sound bad but it's got this grimy look to it you know yeah like kind of a like yeah, yeah, yeah like you got this classic like madison square garden but it's an hd look you know <laughs> to you uh <laughs> at inspire pro and um and, and i think i think especially rwa is kind of finding its identity still as a younger promotion um uh-huh. you know and, and 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 one that presents to more than just the people that come into west newton and i think that's part of the battle that's happening there with them and i think they're making huge huge strides and have over the last year to do something oh, like yeah. that and they're doing different stuff you know like this fan strap match we could have a whole show on whether that's a good idea or not for <laughs> instance um but <laughs> but uh, but i think it's it's much more important than just putting on good wrestling shows it's about branding yourself as a company oh never and, mind uh, i'm sorry that that preview was actually out <laughs> so no, there's a super indie logo oh, that i've been trying to keep under wraps but uh, apparently we... oh, well, that looks really nice look at that yeah. thing that's pretty that's pretty awesome actually so uh and, and you see there's still kind of the old colors are up there and everything but um but no yeah it, it's something different and i like that and, and and like we're changing they're changing it up we yeah i, I just do the dvds and help them with social media uh but (laughs) but 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 uh and even the stuff they're doing with the videos is different like there's not aftershock but there's just a bunch of different kinds of videos you know and 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 um and and i'm liking i'm liking that both companies are taking strides uh in in that kind of way now you guys like i feel like inspire like again like i we're coming from different situations where uh this company is trying to bump up to the next level this company is is in a in a ownership transition and a new vision kind of adapting to the old history now inspire it feels like you guys always had a vision for your visuals that is a really repetitive statement isn't it (laughs) yeah for the most part i i think that you know, even even in certain aspects, it's a growing it's a growing process. Mm-hmm. Um, you you sort of find yourself. I mean, in, in you know, I would say we finally nailed down the the direction and and the look of of what we want our company to be like. Probably our first after our third show, right? Because um, that's when we partnered with like Slybrand to do a production and 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 really started to um, to focus on making our company look a certain way. Um, and it's so important, and and it's something that I think a lot of people don't always uh, always take into account. Definitely, and you know, it's having this, you know, having a brand, having a way the show looks is 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 so important. Mm-hmm. I'm showing some of the posters here. But yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I was looking for a spot. I'm like, where is all their posters? Instagram, of course. That is a weird picture I just went to. Um, I, yeah, I, I think that's super important. People don't think about it. They're like, I, I put a ring in a place and I get people and I put up a flyer that says Live Pro Wrestling at the top, right? Yeah, um, I'm sure they'll come. You know? I, you know, it's wrestling. They'll come. And that works in some places. Um, I talked with somebody uh, that, that, that does shows uh, kind of a, you know, a good hour and a half away from Pittsburgh. And uh, and they're they're trying to figure that out, you know. I, and, and, and I think in places like West Newton, Clearfield, Beadville, I think it is a matter of like 
okay, if you have a bigger show like we did with Meadville with Kevin Nash, Ric Flair on it, you're going to have people traveling in. But yeah. the Meadville people showed up because this is the one time a year there's a big wrestling show. And, um, and and it's a big deal. Twice a year, Clearfield, there's a wrestling show. You come in. And then, and then you know, some of these other places trying to do twice twice a month, you know, in these smaller towns. Uh, you know, what are you, you know, that's also, and, and, and that's the other thing. Like, I, I, I look at some of these, are you making wrestling, especially if you're trying to put yourself out there like you guys are and putting yourself online and, and having that, um putting up YouTubes until you feel confident in your production and your product for everybody not buying a ticket to actually charge for it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, that just that, that disconnect that happens a lot and people figuring out that next step and more than just putting the stuff in the ring, but also conveying that a little bit as well. So, yeah. Oh, there's my random talk shop for you for this week. So, (laughs) (laughs) um, but other than that, um I, but great you know good to see that coming up with inspire pro a lot of i've noticed a lot of faces popping up all over the place the lie doom uh is looks like i've seen pictures of some interesting matches she's had all around again we had her after like three matches on this show and good to see that yeah. she's um, and then not not to not to foreshadow anything because the thing's been confirmed but we're hoping to have her back very soon good uh to sort of get an update on on her career and stuff like that so Exactly, exactly. She's been around doing great stuff. And I, I know I've been very excited about the YouTube videos she's been doing yes. uh, over the last year. Just just fun, creative stuff. Yeah. And, she's and, one that gets, she, for somebody so young in the business, she mm-hmm. gets branding herself like so much. Her Twitter and her, you know, all her social media stuff and, and the stuff that she does with her character, I think is, is, you know, it shows a bit of ingenuity as far as, you know, marketing yourself. Mm-hmm. Which is interesting. You know, I, I, I want to put this out there. So we've talked about how I despise um, indie promos that are over over 60 seconds. Yes. And I thought it was interesting with Tough Enough, and we're seeing so many Tough Enough uh, people coming out. Dylan Bostic, <laughs> of, uh, that's been IWC, VOW all over the place. Uh, kind of a big deal. Ray Lynn did one, too. Um, mm-hmm. The girl you usually see with him. Um, uh, Jimmy Nuts, a friend of the show, did one. Uh, uh, Darren De Niro, who I hope is going to be a future friend of the show. I'm actually talking to him at the last Meadville show about having him on. And uh, after that conversation, I'm very listen. If you're out there, I hope this isn't a humble. This is a humble brag. I know it's going to be. Um, but uh, if you're if you come up to me and saying when am I going to get it on the show, <laughs> um, <laughs> usually it takes me having that conversation and says, okay, this is a conversation I'm going to have on the show, or this is a person that, that I can talk with on the show, or you know, or lining up with the schedule. <laughs> so right. two things need to happen there, and there's a couple of you guys on my radar, and some of you have been on for far too long, unfortunately, due to scheduling conflicts, but uh, that is definitely, don't worry. We're, st- we're still thinking about you over here. Um, <laughs> but um, anyways, <laughs> other than that side. But uh, so, so my promos thing and, and tough enough. And, you know, again, seeing those people try to squeeze something in the 60 seconds, I think is a good ta- you know challenge, I think, for some yeah. of them. I've been having. Also, as we mentioned on the show before, filming uh, with your iPhone horizontally. Holding your damn high iPhone the right way. But <laughs> um, and I've been more or less stalling so I can log in and kind of show something that I, I kind of ran into from actually a friend of the show and i don't know if this is originally was a video that was done for instagram but if you're a wrestler and you have an instagram account i, I want to try this. and i really hope I, I i know wrestlers listen to this like a, they come up to me at the shows but if you're a younger wrestler trying to kind of figure things out I, and I, I kind of do a weekly challenge on my basic ergonomics show like hey talk for five minutes in a microphone or your phone or something like that and we'll critique it something like that not that yeah. i expect any of you guys to do that with me here or publicly or anything like that but uh, uh seraphini has been putting videos and promos on her uh instagram account mm-hmm. um and and that was i thought genius that they popped in there and did like a i don't know if this is the one that i saw like a 15 second promo that's all you have that's all you get Maybe you, you need. maybe you do it. It's all you need. It's definitely all you need. Maybe you do thirty seconds because you're doing uh, Insta- or Twitter. Maybe you do a yeah. six second promo because you're using Vine. You know, I I think that's a, a one. You're putting your face out there. It's another place for you as a brand, as a as a as a wrestler to to be connecting with people. 
And I mean, if anything, social media is the perfect thing for you because you are the brand. You're not selling anything else but you and what you do, you know. Um, and I think I think accounts like this really take advantage of that uh, and really do a good job of it. So, uh, I mean, and she's putting uh, I don't know what I don't know if this is recorded. I, I love these stylized ones she's doing. Because this looks like this looks like old timey wrestling footage, and I'm presuming <laughs> it looks like it was filmed off of a TV with the camera, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and and a big black and white crazy filter applied to it. But it looks cool, you know. And maybe it was just yeah. maybe maybe this was some match in front of 50 fans that looked crappy with horrible lighting and whatever. <laughs> but uh, it turned into a really cool uh, uh, Instagram clip. Instagram, especially, I think, is growing as one of the social medias that I think more people need to be on and and utilize. Mm-hmm. Um, f- just from the stuff I've seen with Inspire, like the like um, our stuff on Instagram, like you know, has been gr- our our fan base has uh, has really grown on there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to the stuff that we post, and and I think you know, using that medium really helps and and because it can do like you said it, you know it's not just a photo website you can have promos and, and and stuff like that on there um you know it's it's something it's another way to market yourself right um you know and and you know i think a lot of wrestlers would be surprised if you know th- you throw up a a, a, a promo photo or, or something or, or an action shot from one of your matches and just hashtag the you know the hell out of it and see what you get mm-hmm. and, and i think a lot of people would be surprised Right, right. I, I'm pulling up, looking a little bit. Mia Yim, somebody that's on my uh, mm-hmm. on my Instagram. It doesn't. I mean, there's a lot of kind of general pictures kind of going on there, uh, but still, like like somebody but that's she, using. She's it a one lot. that's fine because she's I think able to mix her life, her actual like life and and stuff like that with her wrestling because she's very much kind of the same person. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like like um, not not he doesn't do this from what I know, but like say like uh, the closest example I can think of is like a Jason Gory. You know, if Gory were to have like a social media account, I would think it would be more based. Oh, on the he, stuff does. His character. he does. He does. He does. Yeah. Do, do you not follow but Gory? <laughs> I, I need to follow Gory. Yeah. I, I just thought of some, just somebody who's a character, and then and, and is sort of like a, mm-hmm. a so specifically a character, you wouldn't see him like his more personal stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, Mia Yim is more like she her her char- She's a wrestler, but she's like a, her character is very much a person. If that makes sense, right? You know what I mean. Like she's, you know, she's just uh, somebody who's, you know, yeah, a wrestler. She's, she's just some person who happens to wrestle. And Instagram is perfect for somebody Gory that has has that, you know, that, that generation dead look that we're talking yeah. about when they were on the show. And, and they can do this stylized kind of stuff and 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 just have a lot of fun with it, right? Um, right. Throw a filter on it, you know, and, and make it look even cooler when he's 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 doing this stuff. And, you know, so great with his expressions and everything. Um, it, it, it's just ready made for for this kind of thing. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's perfect for something like that. And, and even something else. I mean, look at you know, uh, I have a lot of uh, you know WWE people in mind because they're they're doing such a great job with this. So visual. So awesome. And you know who's been doing really good, other than the WWE account itself, is uh, Natty Nightheart. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it, like, for, like, and you could tell, like, you kind of saw her figuring it out. Because for a while, she would just do, like, just stupid selfies of her hair or something, right? Mm -hmm. But now it is, like, a little bit of everything. And I think, and I'm sure they kind of get a little bit of help here um, when they go through this kind of stuff. And Mm -hmm. even uh, randomly, there's a, Okay, that's appropriate. There's a Catwoman picture, and and, yeah. and, and and considering her her wardrobe these days, um, you know. But it is a lot of like it's her, it's her brand. Look what she's wearing now, you know. Yeah, and that's um, like an organization too that just really focuses on their wrestlers being on social media. Mm-hmm. Um, no matter if they use it, I actually saw a couple of days ago. I didn't even realize this. Uh, like Dean Ambrose and Luke Harper both have uh, Twitter accounts, right? But there's no tweets, right? They, I, I and, saw the. And I think even Dean Ambrose's like bio says like they made me get one. <laughs> like I was like, okay, you know, like it, it's interesting. I guess it fits their characters, you know, in, in right. that case. But right, you know, right. it, they're not something that would intriguing. be on something like this. Um, but again, it's that behind the scenes. I, every time I do a social media talk, talk and brands come up, WWE is the go-to because mm-hmm. they're the ones. Um, but. <laughs> 
But anyways, uh, but but and that's the other thing. Um, you know, how many times has the conversation led to if you want to see what it takes to make it in the business, at least in a certain aspect, you should be looking at a WWE Ring of Honor TNA, see what those people are doing and yeah. get ideas, see how they do things. Because if you get to something like that, have the opportunity, you're going to have to adapt anyways, right? Um, yeah. I'm not going to go if, get a job at uh, videoing for WWE and think I can do things the way I was doing on the Indies. I'm going to do it the WWE way, right? They're kind mm-hmm. of the experts here. And I'm just a hand in that, you know, and the same thing as if you're in the ring, I'd imagine, uh, to a certain ter- certain regard. And, and and look at how they're doing in social media. They are the award winning people with social media. Well, who's <laughs> your favorite wrestler? Maybe as uh, maybe you know, I don't want to speak for our guest here earlier, but as a, as a, a lady wrestler, um, I feel like the old timing to the lady wrestler. But hey. uh, <laughs> look at Natty Neidhart. Like, look what she's doing. And, and, and you know. Uh, I want to say imitate, get inspiration from that. What can you be doing, you know, yeah. with a, a Samantha Star Instagram or something like that? So, and, and, and you don't have to do everything exactly the same either. Like, find what fits your voice. Find a way to tell your story. I'm doing a social media session here. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> um, but, um, but, but, but really, it is. It is. Um, how do you, how, how do you visually tell that if you're on Instagram? How do you tell it when you tweet, you know? Um, and there is that in, goes back to that discussion how do you separate that yeah you know um you know jason gory is a different account than not to give it all his name bob smith you know I'm, that's not yeah. his name don't look up i'm sure bob, his name is bob don't smith. look up <laughs> bob smith jason gory okay uh, it, not that it's hard to figure out these people's names or anything but i'm not right. gonna put it out but there. they're so but but you but, know, but, they, but it's different like like and, and and bob smith posts gory pictures because hey i'm this person and my friends know i'm a wrestler on facebook that's one thing um and that's been that's been an argument for a while yeah kayfabe's dead but you still have to it's a branding thing it's not a character thing anymore it's a branding thing yeah it's a it's a like there's it's one thing like if you're say like like Amiya Yemi in the case where it's like your character is that you're a wrestler, so you're kind of, you know, a person. If you post like, oh, I went to the gym today or, you know, something yeah. along those lines, she's then that's about, fine. Cause she's taking fits. pictures of supplements and shit. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, like, well, well, she's fit. That makes sense. And it's actually, yeah, she, in some of these, uh, Andrew Neese is one of these. I think he might be a phys- uh, physical trainer or something on, as his day job. Uh, some of these guys get, even if they're just indie wrestlers, like, like sponsorships or something yeah. with some of these. And they're I've promoting. seen that sometimes too, yeah. Uh, I, I've seen that happen a bit. I think, uh, I feel like Facade was doing something with that too. Oh, I, I know. It, actually, I know a wrestler that does that and he got sent to a, something for, for, for uh, a certain, inter- was it energy drink? Something like that. Um, and uh, not but, as but a wrestler. My thing is always, right. my, my thing is always, my biggest thing is like when, that like that, those kind of posts are fine, but, the, but if you're, on social media under your wrestler name, kind of under your wrestler persona, and then you have a post that's like, this is what I hate about the wrestling business. And it's like, oh, you're like, yeah. You know, like pulling back that curtain. It's it's so, like, it's it's hard to see. that There's certain things where you, I, you made a, a blog post about this years and years ago, and I always try it, you know, anytime I think about it, I'm like, I want to reshare that post. Um, uh, about social media and how wrestlers should have a wrestling social media and their personal one, and they shouldn't intermingle the two. And in that... most cases, I still say in most cases, yeah. Uh, David Atunga is not any different. D- yeah, that's another great. You example. know what I mean? Like, like he's like him. His Instagram half the time is him just just having fun with his kid, you know. Mm-hmm. But his character is still a version of himself. And you're able to have him be a tongue in cheek that character. Like again, you know, it, it's that spectrum. You know, I well, would or, you know, I'm don't expect there to be a Paul Levesque Twitter. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, because Triple H is basically a version of him anyway. But Triple H even still won't make a you know a lengthy post about you know some opinion he has about the business or whatever That's like because he still you know he'll, he'll post stuff about maybe corporate life or or something like that like if there's an event that he's at or something like that but not you know pulling back that curtain too far um if that makes sense mm-hmm. well on that note, 
we've, on that. <laughs> we've we've broken that down a good bit. So I all my podcasts end up being about social media. It's but just, hey, I mean, yeah. But that's it, what it I'm is. into. That's what's got me excited. I, I talk about I was in front of Point Park University students last week, and I I called it. I didn't really have a plan going into it. It's my one man show of things I'm excited about. It's social media and podcasting, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and 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 this is the kind of conversations that I have, and I, I see where they go. So. Much like this podcast. Um, coming up, Vicious Hellcast Wrestling. Like we mentioned this weekend. Uh, let's see. Are these people this weekend? No, they're probably next weekend. Uh, but we do also have... I know I got... This is a press release one that I got. Uh, IWA East Coast. I hear they're kind of a big deal. Down in Char- Charleston, West Virginia, May 2nd. Um, they got a lot of stuff going on. Relentless Ron Mathis. Madman Pondo bulldozer matt tremont there's a name we know on this show Mm -hmm. uh and then the names are different from there that i don't recognize but no that's (laughs) that's a uh that's that's one of the uh there's definitely one of the indies i've been around for a good bit um definitely uh skewing more towards the hard care hard hardcore this is actually their masters of pain 2015 tournament yes this is i think that stuff this is one of those uh, kinds of tournaments. Like one of my, the second year going to the gathering, I, I sat in on a JCW uh, Q and A. Mm-hmm. Madman Pondo talking about how he found a pencil in his ass, not up it, but in the fleshy part. Uh, about two days later, from a bed of pencils that he got thrown on. Hardcore wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but if you're into that kind of thing, uh, they got that going on down there in Charleston, West Virginia, this weekend. I'm sure you can find that. Wow, this is they they love their barbed wire down there. Is this is this a oh okay? I got to show this one. (laughs) Oh, I'm on their Facebook and somebody shared. It's a Guitar Hero controller. And you see all those little dots right there if you're on video. They're thumbtacks. I love the creativity of hardcore wrestling. I I got I I points points to to this uh, Aaron fellow. That posted the Masters of Pain 2015 Facebook event. Thank you. I still that. think the worst weapons in deathmatch is always the uh, the like the office water jug covered <laughs> in thumbtacks on a stick. Covered in thumbtacks on a stick. Oh no. Yeah, because that's not fun. <laughs> I, I at least I hear. I've never been hit by one. Oh jeez. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? We're just gonna have to. If I ever visit you down there, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> don't have a lot of death match down here but yeah no no for for having texas death, death I, i've seen right? some light tube stuff uh, every once in a while but yeah yeah we're over it we're over it as a wrestling fan base i think so yeah i think i mean even czw is like not strictly glass anymore like Listen, i feel like they really the same only, glass and you stuff can like that. only ask people to bleed for 20 bucks a night so many times before the well yeah. runs dry you know i think I, so I, I think is the general comment there all right anything else coming up uh there's one promotion that i want to plug that uh is having an event this weekend that's been uh doing some really cool stuff as of late uh, 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 in the Dallas, Texas area, uh, I, uh, they've been kind of growing a bit, and that's uh, VIP Wrestling. Uh, uh, you can find more information about them on ProWrestlingDallas.com. Uh, they have an event coming up this weekend, May 1st. Uh, uh, I believe the event's called Good for Business. Uh, funny play on words. Uh, the main event for that show is uh, ACH, who is their VIP Wrestling Champion, taking on Johnny Mundo, uh, a.k.a. John Morrison. Um, which is kind of a, an indie wrestling dream match. Uh, uh, so definitely go check that out. Uh, Ray Death Rose also on the show. Um, a lot of friends of the show uh, uh, that we've talked to from the Texas area are, are on that event. Uh, for more information, go to ProWrestlingDallas.com, and that's uh, May 1st uh, in Arlington, Texas. So definitely go uh, check them out. Awesome. And that's all. That's it. Thank you, Samantha Starr, for joining us. Uh, please... I don't actually don't have anything to follow her on. I just, I can't, I can't, no <laughs> follow Vicious Outcast Wrestling. You follow Vicious Ask Outcast Wrestling, for instance, and uh, stay tuned. In the coming weeks, we got some great interviews. We're uh, working on lining up here. Hopefully, some uh, names you've been seeing on the TV maybe returning to the show. Um, so, uh, so much fun going on. You can, uh, you can check us out wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Subscribe to this and other shows in the Mayhem Network. 
on iTunes, Twitter. Wow, I just mixed that up. Social media, wherever it is, it's late. Live at WrestlingMayhemShow.com at about 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central Time for Amen out there. And uh, please drop us a line, Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Again, big thanks to Basic Sickness for that intro and outro theme music at BasicSickness.com. Check out PittsburghWrestling.com and uh, coming soon, uh, the revamped IndieWrestling.us is going to be the new store for everything we're doing for our friends at IWC, RWA, the former Prime Wrestling, our documentaries, and, and everything coming up. We got some fun stuff coming up, guys. Like, my, my to-do list is really cool right now. Um, so, good time to be a Indie Wrestling fan. Good time to be doing the Indie Mayhem Show at Sorgatron at Amon2. Please, please support Indie Wrestling. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Beat up with a taste of the blood. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Wow. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.